everybody and welcome back to Tens of Motorsports. Today we're going to be doing a quick review of this GZER. This is a carbon monoxide sensor. This is the SA103 model. These are super important when you're working in enclosed spaces and you've got any amount of carbon monoxide. So especially if you're working in a shop, they give you some examples here on the box. So furnace with natural gas, uh, outdoor camping, uh, there you go, there's your furnace. If, if you're running aircraft, planes, stuff like that, uh, cars, trucks, RVs. There's a lot of other uses for this. I'm gonna be putting this in the shop today. We'll find a good spot to put it. It doesn't actually have to be maintained that often. It's got a two year battery in it and it's just a nine volt. So when the battery goes dead on it, you can just pop off the back and replace it. And the filter on it is a five year filter. It comes with a manual and it does come with a lanyard. Uh, but as you can see here, I did have this apart because I was playing with it. And so we're not gonna do like a full unboxing because there's really not that much to it. Uh, the lanyard that goes right here and then it can hang on the wall, uh, I've misplaced it. So I can't seem to figure out where that went, but yours will come with a lanyard and then you're able to, to hang it a little bit more easily than what we'll be doing today since I'm missing mine. So what we'll be doing is I actually want to see if we can get this to read and uh, start to throw some alarms and things like that. As cars have gotten newer, uh, they produce much less carbon dioxide out the back of the car, meaning that your carbon monoxide sensor isn't going to read as much from a newer car as an older one. My race car does not have cats on it and it has a very aggressive tune on it. So I'm hoping that putting this towards the back of the car will actually be able to get a reading and maybe even have it go off and show what would happen if you had an issue where you had a lot of carbon monoxide. I wasn't really worried about this kind of stuff until the other day when I realized that I was running the cars inside for a fairly long amount of time. So with the black race car that we've been building, I had to basically run it and get it up to temperature and make sure all the fluids were good and I had to do that a few times and, and you have to turn the car on and you run it and coolant system bled and get the power steering running right. And I, I was running it in the garage a lot and we had the foresight to keep the doors open but that doesn't mean that this isn't a good idea to have around. So some of the features it does a real-time display it displays the time of the day so we'll have to get all that set up. It does a visual and a vibration alarm it displays peak value so when you turn it on and then you go to turn it back off you can actually get a peak value of whatever happened during that time it was running and I think while it's running, you can get a peak value. This is dust and waterproof. You don't wanna go swimming with it or anything like that, but it is water resistant essentially. And then the rubber case actually can be dropped from six feet without causing any damage to the actual device. So we're gonna get this turned on real quick here. I think it should uh, make a little bit of noise for us and we'll get to see it in action. Yeah, you heard it. Uh, you heard the alarm there and you heard it buzz as well. That's the vibrate. So the alarm levels will be uh, zero to 50. Uh, we're gonna get no alarms or anything like that. It's fairly uh, normal amount of carbon monoxide. And then from 50 to 200, we should start seeing the red light and a buzzer sound. And then uh, anything above 200, uh, basically this thing starts to freak out. Any noise, vibrations, anything like that, all the flashing lights will start to go nuts. So pretty simple to get this thing set up. Uh, you can go through your different modes by pressing the M button here. And uh, yeah, so obviously right now we're basically seeing no parts per million. I've got the doors open and I haven't been running any vehicles, but we're gonna go stick this back by the race car, give it a cold start and see if we can't get this thing to start making some noise. So I'm gonna put this right here on the one side and you can see the filter is closest to it. Um, not that I don't think that my car could make this go off, but I don't want to run my car in the garage for a super long time. So that's why we're putting this fairly close to it and we'll see if we can get that number to move at all. This is a live reading. So as you're seeing right now, that's actually what it's seeing in the air. Now, based on the way that this car smells and my experience with it, this shouldn't take super long to see that number at least change if this doesn't start to go off fairly soon. Yeah. <laughs> 
It didn't take very long and it's maxed out. All right, so <laughs> as you can see that, that didn't take very long. And uh, I don't think it goes any higher than 1,000. Like I literally just let the car run for just a moment. So let's see, is that the button? Oh, so that's, that's your speaker. So I'm just gonna cover that for right now so that it's not beeping while I'm talking. But yeah, so this car produces a, a lot of carbon monoxide. So running this in the garage for even a short amount of time can be extremely dangerous. I'll put this kind of like in the middle, maybe a little bit closer to where I work on cars and that way start getting close to any of the levels that would be considered dangerous. I'll be able to hear this going off fairly quickly. As you can see, the numbers are starting to drop here. As it dipped under 200, it's no longer vibrating. And then as this gets closer to 50, it should stop beeping as well. All right, now that it's under 50 uh, and we are out in the backyard, it is no longer beeping and it is very loud. Even with me covering the speaker, you could hear it from all the way across the shop. <laughs> I would say that it does absolutely work. So I'm gonna go find a spot, uh, preferably in the middle of my work area and I will hang this up and we should be good to go. All right, so I have this hanging from the post. I just went and grabbed a, like a USB lanyard because like I said, I misplaced mine. But let's go over here to our max. So you can see here it says 1000. So that was our max reading while it was on. I'm assuming it was way higher than that if that's what it was. And it filled up the entire garage basically. This thing was beeping. Uh, I opened up all the doors and stuff like that and I had to walk outside to record to get it to stop. So it just shows how little uh, a older car or a car that's modified will put out in such a small amount of time. So if you want to see that, you click this once, click it again, you'll see time. And then if you leave it, it'll eventually go back to your live reading. So in the instructions, it gives you a ton of information, which is really helpful. Uh, it says around 24 parts per million, you're gonna get dizzy after 64 hours of exposure, uh, around 50, around 32 hours of exposure, and around 100 parts per million, you'll, you'll start getting dizzy after 16 hours. Around 200 parts per million, you start actually getting headaches, fatigue, vertigo, nausea. Once you go beyond that, it'll actually start to be life-threatening. So around 400, it could be uh, between one and two hours, you could actually uh, pass out. And if you're around 800 parts per million, you'll start getting cramps, being sick, loss of consciousness within 45 minutes or so. So it's very important to, once this thing starts going off, to pay attention to what you're doing. And if you're running a lot of cars in the garage, get your doors open, and keep the air flowing so that you're not getting your entire garage full of carbon monoxide. All right, everybody. So obviously this is a no brainer. Uh, it's something that I clearly wasn't aware of, especially with my race car, that it produced that kind of pollution into the air so quickly. So it was a bit of an eye opener. I'm glad that I have this and have it in a spot in the garage that's gonna be safe for everybody in there while we work on cars. Everything I showed today will be linked in the description below. So thanks everybody so much for watching. If you have a shop, make sure you buy one of these and you have a fire extinguisher as well. It's the two things that I'm going to make sure I have with me at all times from here on out. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bam!